Hey, what's up studs? Ryan here or MNR Productions with my review of the 1999 Lego Star Wars X-Wing Fighter. Its official set number is 7140. It includes 263 pieces. You got four minifigs in the set, including Big Stark Lighter, Luke Skywalker, R2-D2, and a Rebel Technician. When the set was released in 1999, it retailed for $30 in the United States and adjusted for inflation in 2020. That's about $50, a little bit on the north side of that, in fact. If you are looking to purchase this set brand new in box on a place like eBay or Bricklink, you'll probably be looking somewhere around $150 to get that done today. Of course, that could change in the future, and I would bet that that would likely go up more over time. The back of the box is going to show the set in a hanger, kind of disassembled, and then you're going to have a couple of alternative model builds to give you some inspiration, which was something pretty cool they did on these Lego boxes back in the day. First up is R2-D2, and of course this would be one of the first appearances of this minifigure in a LEGO Star Wars set, and for 1999, it looked good enough in my opinion. I've talked about this figure a lot. He showed up in quite a few 1999 sets, so I don't really have much else to add to that if you haven't seen my other reviews. Basically, this figure is good enough for the time, but obviously uh, the newer versions are much, much better. Next on the chopping block is Luke Skywalker, who LEGO did a great job with. I think this one obviously uh, doesn't stand the test of time. No back printing, no leg printing, no waist printing, and obviously the torso print is very very bare bones. I actually think the helmet looks pretty good though for 1999. The face print, you know, it resembles Luke enough, I guess, but the best thing of this character is going to be that chrome shiny lightsaber with the blue blade there. Gotta love that classic chrome. Obviously they don't produce that anymore, but still a great minifigure for the time and great lightsaber hilt, of course. Big's Dark Lighter was also included in the set and really added a nice bit of flair to the X-Wing in my opinion. His mustache and classic checkerboard print on that helmet are just excellent for this set in my opinion. I really think it added a nice bit of style to this X-Wing, a nice flair that it wouldn't have otherwise had if you just included the Luke and R2-D2 figures. So this was a really nice inclusion by LEGO even though you obviously can't have two pilots at once. It was nice to be able to trade out when you wanted and have one figure in and out of the X-Wing. The torso print is exactly the same as Luke, but again, that mustache is just one of the coolest things I've seen on a LEGO figure. It's a regular smiley face, but with a mustache. The fourth and final minifigure included in the set is a rebel mechanic and i'll be honest this one looks a little bit weird he once again retains that regular smiley face but it's got quite a bit added on top of it you have a crazy mustache even crazier than mr dark lighters and then you have this like stubble beard going on and then you have hair coming down and out from underneath the hat and i'll be honest the brim of the hat is a little bit large, so not really a fan of the hat on this character, but it definitely looks weirder without the hat, so I don't really know where to land on that one. It would have looked better with a helmet, maybe. Not sure. Anyway, the torso print is nice and unique for the time. Obviously, future renditions of characters like this in LEGO would get much better prints, but still decent for the time, and kind of like the all-tan color scheme. Kind of an interesting look for this figure, but that is all four minifigures in the set. A decent selection, obviously, by today's standards, the prints just aren't going to hold up, but I think the four figures are pretty good on their own. Not the X-Wing quite yet. The set did include a small maintenance vehicle, which is a pretty decent design. Obviously, it's not made to be picked up because when you do pick it up, it kind of falls apart like that. It'll flip around and stuff, but it's still pretty neat. You have three separate platforms. The front one allows you to place your technician or engineer on the front there and hold on to uh, these nice little yellow antenna pieces to control the thing. It's got like some blocks back here, some bricks that you can pull off and use for whatever you want. You also have some yellow pieces here, which I suppose you could have him hold and then direct the X-Wing into its position. You have kind of this two by four brick in the next section where you can kind of place anything you want on top of here. And then the back section has a bunch of clips and there's actually a sprue of tools included in the set, which I have misplaced, but it would uh, have a bunch of tools that you could attach to that. And then finally in the back, you have a little bit of a connection to refuel your X-Wing, which I think is really neat. And I think this uh, is big and bulky because it's supposed to hold the fuel in there at least pretend to so that's really neat and that is the little maintenance vehicle included in the set 
Let's bring over this X-Wing from 1999. What a blast from the past, an absolute classic, a beauty. The only original trilogy style X-Wing to ever be made in gray. After this model, they went white with all of the future X-Wings. And something really cool about this X-Wing, I bought it brand new and mine came with a mismolded piece. That's pretty crazy. That does not happen very often. And I got very lucky with that. So I just thought that was pretty cool and something I would share during this review. That's not a typical experience with a Lego set though. The front of the X-Wing features a nicely printed piece there with a nice granulated design, which kind of goes from dark to light as you move back. So that's kind of nice, something you don't see on any of the other Lego X-Wing sets. You'll actually notice there's a red stripe running down the nose of the X-Wing as well, which turns gray at the very front here. The front landing gear is nice, although I will say it falls off very easily. So it's definitely not my favorite landing gear design on an X-Wing. You can certainly pull it off when you want to use this in flight mode or whatever, but again, it doesn't just fold away nicely like the modern day X-Wings. So that's definitely a drawback of this set. Something else that's weird, just kind of like a design flaw or something, something that is maybe intended, but not really great is this little storage area. Not really sure how exactly I feel about that. They definitely could have just put in a one by four plate and had that connect up and been done with it. But I guess it's a nice extra storage area for people that want that. I just think it's a little bit awkward sometimes if you accidentally open it, like it's just not supposed to do that, but it is what it is. I don't Underneath the X-Wing here, you'll find some nice shaping with some pretty standard Lego pieces from back in the day. Really like their use of the like grill style pieces there to add some texture to the side of the X-Wing. The cockpit piece is one we would see used for about 15 years following the release of this set. So that's kind of neat. You have this really interesting print on there that again, didn't change much for 15 years, but you can actually open this up and you have a very rudimentary cockpit area for Luke Skywalker. And there's actually a nice little Death Star trench print on the control panel, which I really like. The other two side control panels are pretty weak sauce, but it is 1999, so keep that in mind. This is very rudimentary, and it's like a deep hole. It's like, I don't know, it's not a great spot to put your pilot, but let's get him in there. So with Luke in a standard seated position, you're gonna notice you're not able to put him in. You're actually gonna have to place his arms at his side, which is not normal for a Lego Star Wars cockpit. Usually you wanna have the arms facing forward. In this set, that is not quite the case. You kinda of, kind of want the arms back. So you can see Luke in there. It's kind of awkward. It's not the best uh, space for him. Obviously, again, a small cockpit area and 1999, that'll do it to you. It creates an awkward space, but once he's actually in there and you're just looking at him, he looks fine. It's just a weird space when you actually acknowledge what you're looking at in there. It's just awkward. But moving on back, you have some nice little Rebel Insignia pieces here printed. These were actually used for like five more years, which I really like these pieces. I think they're just classic Lego Star Wars prints there. Very beautiful. And then you actually have a little spot for R2-D2, which is still kind of open on the sides. They didn't really close it off, unfortunately. I guess they just didn't have the uh, space to do so there, but... You can drop R2-D2 onto uh, the stud jumpers there, and he's going to fit very nicely in there. Just barely peeking out over the top of that piece there, but it does work very nicely. And, you know, uh, annoyance aside that it's not really filled out on the sides, it doesn't really matter to me. It looks just fine for $19.99. Opening up this back hatch here will reveal more storage, and this is where I'm going to attempt to store Luke's lightsaber, if we can get this hilt off, just like that, the bottom, and then the uh, blade on top there. Quite a bit of space there. There, and then you can close that back up very easily. Really like this piece from back in the day. I don't really see that anymore, but it's a very smooth hinge piece that works really nicely. I don't know why Lego did away with that and they don't use it very much, but I think it's pretty clean and works very nicely there. You can see on the back side here, you have another one of those control panels. Not really sure why there's a control panel on the back end of the X-Wing, but they decided to throw it in there. The engines look good enough for 1999. Wouldn't say it's anything spectacular, but good enough. You have these very large pieces here on the forward part of them that actually uh, are the intake and they look actually really nice, especially for 1999. I'm sure it looked much better the first time around compared to the multiple other times they've done X-Wings with those pieces, but still good enough in my opinion. You have your cannons on either side of the X-Wing, which use uh, the cone pieces very nicely there to add a little bit of extra detail on the end. Very cool. No flick fire missiles, no stud shooters gonna be found here, just straight up 
imaginative play. That's all it's going to be. You do have this really cool printed piece on here, which is something we see similar on other X-Wings, but that one kind of denotes that this is uh, Luke's X-Wing, which I do really like. I think that's a good job by Lego to add that detail in. But let's go ahead and make this X-Wing fly. You can lift it up and you're going to be able to drop the wings down on the top and the bottom pretty easily to open them up into attack position, just like that, very easily. And just like that, you have your X-Wing ready to go. You'll notice the landing gear on the bottom and the back as as well is quite bulky and can get in the way so that's kind of interesting to see there that it does uh, kind of jut out quite a bit like the one in the front doesn't fold up uh, the newer x-wings do a much better job of hiding that back landing gear and of course the front landing gear will just kind of fold up but in this case it does not and it does look a little bit awkward in my opinion just not quite as refined as current ones and that's to be expected i will say another downside of this x-wing design is these engines and the fact that if you're kind of holding it in the back here um you can knock these off really easily. They just pop right off. There's no Technic connection holding them together like you would see on modern sets. So that's just one small downside of it is that you can easily knock them off, but obviously you can put them back on just as easily. So overall, what do I think about this set? I think it's a very interesting X-Wing. It's very different philosophy-wise from the other X-Wings, which obviously LEGO used white instead of gray because in universe, this vehicle is kind of gray. Like it definitely has that hint of gray, but LEGO does sometimes just make those things white because it looks cleaner. Another example would be like the Snowspeeder, 1999 Snowspeeder. They made gray. All the other ones since then have been done in white except the sand speeder, but that's a different story. But yeah, still kind of interesting set from that perspective. You get four really good minifigs, in my opinion, for the time. Big Starklighter, the Rebel Technician or Engineer. You have Luke Skywalker and then R2-D2. So still good figure selection, even by today's standards. This added vehicle is nice enough, I suppose, although I'm never the biggest fan of those things. And the X-Wing itself, while it does have its flaws, still has that classic charm. If you want the first X-Wing, the set that I think is the face of 1999 Lego Star Wars set. This is that. This is also the X-Wing for the Nostalgia Junkie. It's such a classic looking model in that old Lego gray color. Is it worth paying $150 for? That's a bit of a tough question to answer. That would very much depend on how much money you have. And even then, if you spend $150 on it, should you open it? Honestly, probably not. You should probably display it in the box. But then again, Legos are meant to be opened and played with. So there's that too. You can definitely spin it either way. But from a collector's standpoint, if you're just collecting it, you could probably just buy it, keep it in the box and be like, hey, this was one of the first Lego Star Wars sets. It was the first X-Wing in 1999. And that's kind of a cool thing to be able to say you have sealed in the box. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below. I'm going to give this set an 8 out of 10. I think it's a really good set. While it does have its flaws, it's still such an instant classic from Lego Star Wars from 1999.